This here is the ASRock Desk Meet B660. Audience, meet the B660 meet. Meet, meet the... Look, all I'm going to say is it's a friendly unit. It's so friendly, in fact, that it's spelt with M-E-E-T, not to be confused with M-E-A-T, meaning it's also a vegan friendly unit. Though speaking of friendly, this contains a B660 ITX board, not to be confused with mini ITX. And so what it means is it's got that extra width on the right hand side of the motherboard, allowing this board in particular to host 128 gigabytes of DDR4 memory over four slots compared to mini ITX boards, which usually only have two RAM slots available. They've also custom fitted this to the case. I'll put the dimensions up on the screen, but at the front of the case, you get four type A USBs already hardwired and a USB type C and a four port mic in audio out hybrid. And then on the back, you get three display outs as well as four type A USB ports, RJ45, and then your standard line in mic in and audio out ports. Though, inside the unit, we've got here two M.2 units, one at the front, one at the back. Both of those support PCIe Gen 4 X4, and also the 16X slot for the PCIe graphics is a Gen 4 solution too. Then you've got two fan headers, one of those most likely being used by the CPU cooler, which allows clearance up to 54 millimeters on the CPU cooler. Then for the graphics card, you can fit a two slot solution up to 206 mil, even though they say 20 centimeters on their site, I did measure up to 206 millimeters. But before we get onto the testing and building this thing up, it will retail, at least what I'm seeing here with the street pricing, around 250 US dollars. And for that price, you get the chassis, the case, and also the B660 ITX, and a 500 watt channel well 80 plus bronze power supply, which is custom sleeved with the runs for this particular case. So all up in terms of the value, it is looking impressive out of the box. But when it comes to a build, are we gonna come into any issues since I will be using an i5-12400, 32 gigabytes of RAM and an RX 6400, which ASRock did send over. They wanted me to take a look at it, but you guys already know when it comes to 6500 XTs and RX 6400s, I'm personally not a big fan. But since we do have the quick sync encoder on board the CPU, that should account for any of those mishaps that the RX 6400 lacks. But let's whip this thing up tech, yes, city style, and then see if we can undervolt it and what the power consumption versus the frame rates are going to be. So now that we've built the PC up, it's time to get into the proverbial uh, meat and potatoes of today's video, and that's reviewing the Desk Meat B660 and testing out the i5-12400 with the default Intel cooler. You'll definitely want to undervolt this CPU, in my opinion, where even on an open testbed system in a cooler environment, the stock cooler is just barely going to do the job. I've tested this cooler in the past. I'll put the link to that video up here. And this is where I decided to undervolt the CPU down to 3.6 gigahertz. We got around 65 watts down from that 86 watts. And this was throwing out much better temperatures in terms of consistently under 70 degrees. Also when we're gaming, it's getting around these temperatures too. But this is because it is an ITX build. And I do stress that airflow is not going to be the best. And in fact, if you're going to do a more higher end build with this rig, say for instance, you're throwing in a 3060 Ti Mini or you're going with a 6600 XT Mini, then you'll definitely want to get a fan installed somewhere in this build to get some airflow going through it. Though there were a couple of bad things, a couple of good things that surprised me and we'll get the bad news out of the way first. And that is the PCIe Gen heat sinks are absent. There is none. So if you are running a Gen 4 drive, do make sure you have your own heat sink to bring to this build because you do not want to run Gen 4 NVMe SSDs without heat sinks. They will have a short life. As opposed to a Gen 3, that's usually fine. I do recommend having a heat sink on them, even though this budget option and the motherboard didn't have any heat sinks. So we can run a Gen 3 drive without a heat sink. Should be okay. The other problem that I came into personally was it's not really a problem, it's just I'd like to see more ventilation on Mini ITX, especially since this board is pretty capable and that has the four DIMM slots, can support the i5-12400 or the i3-12100. I personally wouldn't go any heavier on a CPU 
in this configuration as then the heat will just get literally too hot to handle. And speaking of heat, here's where we had the RX 6400, we had that i5-12400 and we we're playing Apex Legends and we're getting around 147 watts out of the box total system power draw, but then when I undervolted the CPU, I dropped it down to 3.6 gigahertz from four gigahertz all core default, and then I dropped it down to minus 50 millivolts. We were able to get some good numbers here of 137 watts, and you're probably like, well, Brian, did you undervolt the RX 6400? And this is what surprised me about the RX 6400. It's completely locked out. I couldn't undervolt this card at all. The options just aren't there in the adrenaline software, or it's not there in the uh, MSI Afterburner. So if you get an RX 6400, you're just gonna be completely locked out. So you can't do anything with the card. But that said, it does look like it has some pretty good watt per FPS performance. We'll put up the whole build here. I played some Apex Legends, 1080p, low settings with four gigabytes textures. We're getting 120 average FPS and 85 1% and then 74.1% lows, throwing up project cars. This defaulted to just auto settings on medium. At 1080p, we're getting just under 60 FPS and the 1.1% lows were decent. Going over to Doom Eternal, here's where we had 1080p high settings. We're averaging around 71 FPS with 56 and 44 1% and 0.1% lows. So the gaming numbers were decent and the temperatures were okay. The single fan RX 6400 was running around 77 degrees and this is in a 30C ambient environment. So it is pretty hot here in Japan and the CPU temperatures were okay as well. So here's where I'm gonna weigh in with my experience on ITX builds and say that with the desk meet, I wouldn't be going any higher than that i5 and that sort of low power consumption budget graphics card. Say for instance, you wanna go with an RTX 3060 Ti, a mini, or an RX 6600 XT mini and an i7, then you will have to add in some extra fans definitely to get heat out of the case, get some airflow going through this thing. Though in hindsight, if I had the option to do this build again, I'd be going with an i3-12100 and say an RTX 3050 mini and then undervolt that RTX 3050 or of course a GTX 1650 super. That would be my two picks to go in this build. But now it's time to get onto the positives with this build. And I was just first of all surprised on just how easy and quickly you can build up an ITX rig in an eight liter form factor in this thing. It took me 10 minutes from start to finish, extremely easy. Just put the CPU in, put the RAM in, the cooler on, put your SSD in, and then put your graphics card in and wire your 24 pin and eight pin. And if your graphics card needs a PCI connector, wire that up and then insert the power supply and then you're good to go. Now the power supply area, you can mount an ATX power supply or you can mount an SFX power supply. And if you mount an SFX power supply, you'll then get extra uh, clearance height on the CPU cooler, an additional 23.5 mil. So it will bring the clearance up to around 77 mil if you're going with an SFX power supply. And then the last thing I noticed that was pretty cool was if you're not mounting a graphics card in this build, say for instance, you're going with no GPU and you wanna make things really quiet, and you then got the option to mount, say, a 120 mil water cooler in place of that GPU and have cooler temperatures on the CPU. The last real good positive with the B660 desk meet, <laughs> that name's a funny one. I, I, I gotta keep sort of reminding myself not to say the desk mini because that's how I always think of these from ASRock, the desk minis and not the desk meets. So the BIOS on this B660 ITX board is great. The utility's there. You can do all the options from undervolting to even setting in custom memory timings, which in this case, I was actually really surprised because I cheaped out so hard on this 32 gigabyte kit of memory that it didn't have XMP profiles, but it did have the memory information that sort of team group set in the JDEC information. So I was able to copy those settings the main timings, the CAS latencies, and then things like the TRAS. And after that, I turned on the ASRock secondary and primary optimization and round trip optimizations, and it did the rest for me. The memory was then able to work, not at 3200 megahertz, however, since the memory was that bad, I got it to work at 3100 megahertz. Even though it booted at 3200 megahertz, it froze, but thankfully we had that manual tuning there that was actually really good to use on this board. So the BIOS works really well, but let's quickly recap this build and give you guys a conclusion. And so when it comes to the shell, right, you've got the pricing there. That is about 250 USD, at least that's the pricing in Japan. And for that, you're getting a motherboard, the chassis, the enclosure, and also a decent power supply that's all wired up in terms of its cable lengths. 
to do the job. And I think in terms of value for money and how they've wired up that front output as well as the whole motherboard in general and how it's mapped out with the BIOS, I think they've done an extremely good job on this one. Though I will say, know the limitations on this build. It's an eight liter, so it is a small case. The ventilation could use a bit of improvement in my opinion. I'd like to see much more mesh on this thing as well as possibly the option to mount even say a very thin uh, 10 centimeter or 12 centimeter low profile fan. I know they exist and they do serve very well in mini ITX builds. So I'd like to see that option and then you could go for say that i5 12600K maybe and then get a water cooler in there or get some better cooling and go for the 3060 Ti Mini. And that would make the potential of this so much more for even custom ITX enthusiasts that want something powerful in a small package. Though as it stands, it's more orientated for an i3-12100 or i5-12400 build with say 32 gigabytes of RAM and a low power consumption graphics card that is of a smaller stature. Though when you do get this build set up, it is a breeze to use and it does work extremely well. And I was impressed with how everything turned out. So it's a good option, especially for people who are getting into ITX and want something easy to build in, want something that's gonna give good value for money and they don't wanna break the bank. The limitations are there, do keep them in mind if you wanna go with a build like this. And with that aside, do let us know in the comments what you think of the DeskMate B660 ITX. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Dude Spookum. And they ask, so I'm trying to clarify, roughly 10,000 yen equates to around 100 USD, or am I totally off on that? And that used to be the way everyone described um, $100 in US. They'd be like, yeah, $100 buys you 10,000 yen. They equal the same, but the US dollar has gotten a lot stronger, especially in the last year. And so the exchange rate is more 100 USD. We'll give you around 13,500 yen, which does make for some bargains outside of tech. I'll put a link to the recent Japanese parts hunt we did for you guys. And with that aside, if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. It's taking me back to the start.